Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got another Civivi today, the Civivi Bow, as you saw on the thumbnail. Uh, I've got the uh, Black Wash Natural G10 version, uh, Nitro V steel. You can also get more premium versions of it. Uh, you can get micarta handle scales. You can get carbon fiber handle scales, not just traditional old school carbon fiber, you know, the cooler stuff, the modern stuff. I would have shown pictures, hopefully, <laughs> I'll add pictures in during editing. Uh, what we've got, I should mention before too long, uh, the designer, we got a BZ right there, or Americans would say BZ, of course. Uh, Brad Zinker, pretty cool. I know a Brad Zanker with an E instead of an I. Uh, so, uh, different guy, very different guy. <laughs> so, this is a nice little utilitarian urban EDC. But you want the details? Stick around. We're going to go to the tabletop and take a good close look at it right now. As we get started looking at this thing, I'm going to go over the prices for this. I gave you the introductory price, but it comes, you know, three ways, like I said. Canadian. So if you want the bow, you know, the carbon fiber one is cheapest in Canada. Uh, but the other ones are cheaper if you buy them from Weight Mountain Knives. Uh, Blades Canada also has them. Their prices uh, without the discount are a little bit more than they are at White, at uh, Integrity Knives. So there you go. What do we have here? This is, like I said, a sub three inch knife. It's not quite a straight back knife. It's a very slight drop point. But we've got a very pointy tip here, full flat grind. You've either got a black wash finish or you've got a gray wash finish. Nitro V steel, it says Nitro V right there on the blade. It's printed quite lightly, so it's hard to see. There is uh, Brad Zinker's logo right there. On the pivot pin, that's all there is for badging. Quite nice. Got a nice belly on the blade. Good straight section here, very thin behind the grind. I'm talking very thin behind the grind. This is an urban EDCer's delight. You know, if you're going to be chopping into wooden stuff, you know, hardwood especially, maybe this isn't the right thing for you. Boy, my hands are dirty. I've been doing lots of work today, <laughs> sharpening and things. So, I guess my, I guess I didn't wash as well as I thought I did. Well, I'm a man. I don't care until dinner time. <laughs> so yeah very thin behind this thing's a slicing cutting piercing dream it's not very strong right at the tip so not a prying knife anyways well knives aren't for prying anyways but that's a different discussion the plunge here there's a nice low plunge and the sharpness choil is the perfect size it ends well after the plunge so you can sharpen this knife no problem without risking getting it messed up right there at the plunge. Beautiful sharpener's toil. The spine of the knife, we've got a chamfer on either side. And then we've got some jimping there. I would have liked if that jimping was about double the length that it is. It's good jimping, but it's not very grippy. If you look at it like this, you can't even see the jimping. i got to pivot it. Turn. Now you can see the jimping, but you can also see this. A handle scale at the back here so it's actually resting in there just a little bit you can feel it when you're holding it like this but it's not very grippy so I, I wish that the jumping went out a little bit further then at least when it was out on the blade here with your thumb you know it'd be just fine very grippy but it's not bad not bad at all the handle scales these are 3d mill g10 there's a bit of a crown going right down the middle so it's a bit wider right in the middle than it is on the edges and then the edges all the way around they have a nice soft chamfer very nicely done and the liners they've got the uh, black coating the same i think probably the same black coating that the blade had before they stone washed it uh, that's how that's how black wash works 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 uh, they coat the blade and then they put in a stone wash machine so very nicely done with these liners. Lots of skeletonizing. You can see it right there. So this show side here has got loads of skeletonizing. 
uh, there isn't skeletonizing on the other side, but this thing is light. Those liners are not super thick. This is not a heavy duty kind of knife, but it's an ED, urban EDCer's dream. I've already mentioned that a couple times, haven't I? Open pillar construction. We've got the T6 screws back here. We've got an, a big hourglass shaped or just hollow in the middle shaped screws, two body screws, and there's the lanyard pin right there. You can see it better on this video than I could get on my still pictures. My uh, sister, my daughter's, not my sister's, my daughter's camera uh, user error. I, I'm just not getting good pictures out of it. She gets great pictures out of it. So I blame Jake 100%. So I have to keep using my uh, cell phone and my cheap old USB microscope to get the good close-up pictures. So the pictures of black on black just don't show up that well. But you can see it in here. That's really well done. I like that pin there. Pocket clip. We've got a typical Sabibi pocket clip right there. Uh, flush screws that are T6. Well, that's a catch-22, isn't it? I love that it's flush screws, but flush T6 screws tend to strip out a little bit easily. So you're going to have to be careful if you want to take that pocket clip off. There's no left option for the pocket clip, so you're probably not going to move it. I do wish it was smaller this way. I've mentioned that several times. There's lots of room in there for your pants to fit. No problem. A uh, little bit flat on the top there. And the hole in here, you know, for the lighter pocket clip and access for the screws. Yeah, it's well done. T8 screw here. And the typical Civivi, uh, the pin has its own engagement to keep the the pin head that were underneath the C to stop it from free spinning. So we've got a fully round pin in there, which is great, but it's not free spinning as well. The rest of it, uh, what didn't I talk about yet? Oh yes, the lock release here. There's some jimping on the side of it. Nice cutaway here. Very easy to disengage that lock and get your thumb in there. Right or left-handed, no problem at all. The flipper, it's got jimping along the front of it and up to the top, so it just works very, very well. We've got a phosphor bronze cage with ball bearings in there, and it just works wonderfully. The light switch method or pulling it down to the side, just beautiful. The detent is spot on. Holds it in there, it's not coming loose unless you engage that flipper. Very well done. Lock up exactly where I like it to be on a brand new knife. Nothing negative about that. And alignment when it's closed, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to perfectly down the middle. Very, very well done. Uh, before I show the pocket clip in function, let's uh, do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Let's put these side by side. Yeah, it's a smaller knife. It looks puny next to this thing, but for those of you who know me, my hands are just between the large and extra large range. Usually I have to buy extra large men's gloves, but uh, my hands aren't really all that extra large. I get a four finger grip. Pinky's just barely gripped on there. You know, if you want a hammer grip, but you know, saber grip, nice delicate pinch grip. You know, all these, it's just it, good. It's very, very good. Let's uh, demonstrate with the pocket now. The uh, pocket clip climbs over every single time, no problem. Goes to the full depth, and there you go. It's barely sticking out. I quite like it. I wish they would have made the G10 version with just the uh, gray wash or stone wash blade. I would like that better than with the black wash blade, but it's not bad. I'm planning on dyeing these a nice royal blue, kind of the color of this placemat here. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? So that's the overview of it. How well does it cut, though, the performance in my testing? Oh, I mentioned it earlier. It cuts very, very well, mostly because of how thin it is. It... Uh, 
didn't cut that well out of the box in terms of sharpness. It actually is poorly sharpened. Uh, the grand angles are fine, but it just, it doesn't have a very sharp edge, but uh, at least from the factory. And then I went and sharpened it and oh, it cuts very, very well. Such a beautiful edge. So yeah, if you know how to sharpen knives and I hope you do, uh, yeah, this is beautiful because of how thin that is behind the grind. You're wondering how thin it is? Okay, I'm gonna take it apart first and then we're gonna go over all the measurements and I'll tell you exactly what the specs are on that blade. Here it is taken apart. Uh, I left the pocket clip on and I took it off on the other side. So I took the pivot screw off from this side and the body screws on the other side. You can see those screws now even more clearly and that pin quite nicely done. See that trench there in the liners? That's because we've got a captured stop pin and yeah, it's fixed in there. And you know, there's that nice blade. We've got ceramic ball bearings in phosphor bronze cage, very nicely done. You can see that there is a tiny bit of blue on there. So there is a little bit of Loctite on there, but just see now it's rolled over. There's no blue you can see at all. It's just on one little spot. So it's not holding tight at all. And the pivot screw doesn't have any. So nicely done. And check out all that skeletonizing. That's a very light piece of steel. And there's the pin. And like I told you before, you see that little bump there? Hopefully you can see it. And there's a little cutout right there on the post that keeps it from spinning. So yeah, this is a very well-made knife that uh, just performs well. Basic construction, no surprises there, well-made. I'm gonna put it back together and then we're gonna go over all the sizes, dimensions, all those specs. The specs, measurements and stuff. First, the steel, Nitro V. It's a fairly new stainless steel. Rockwell on that is around 5960 usually. And from my experience of using it and sharpening it, it feels like it's that and yeah, quite nice. The measurements, weight, 60 grams, 2.15 ounces. Yes, just over two ounces. Not bad at all. Factory sharpness, 295 bests. Terrible. <laughs> it was not sharpened well at the factory. I measured it several times and that's the average that I came up with. So yeah, I'm assuming that there was a bad burr left on it and a burr. Uh, the way we do the tests is there's a machine that's calibrated and whatever amount of pressure it takes to cut through that, uh, there's a fiber that gets put across a, a space, whatever pressure it takes to cut through that fiber gives the number. So this is 295 grams of pressure half a pound of pressure to cut through this thin filament yeah it should be well average is around 140 so it's twice as much pressure as average but after i sharpened it you know it's like 20 grams of pressure like more than 10 times sharper so yeah it's easy to get pop and sharp and now for the measurements in terms of the length and stuff. The length of the cutting edge is 73 millimeters, 2.87 inches. Length of the blade, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 73.9 millimeters, 2.91 inches. So well within the three inch laws that you may be living under. The thickness of the blade, 2.41 millimeters, 0 0.095. So just about a tenth of an inch. So thinner than an eighth of an inch, but it's not crazy, crazy thin, but it's definitely a nice light thin knife. The blade depth, that's this measurement. It's biggest right here at the heel of the blade, 19.5 millimeters, 0.767 of an inch. How thin is it behind that grind? So on black wash knife, it's easy to see what I'm measuring. I'm measuring where the black starts. This is the main bevel where that black begins. That's the thickness behind the grind. 0.24 millimeters, nine and a half thousandths of an inch. 
that's all it is. So you can sharpen this thing loads of times before you get, you know, too thick for it to be a good working knife. I love that. The grind angles. I don't have averages for you. I just got these other numbers. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Grind angles. About here where my finger is, 21.4. Around here, 23.7. This side, 17.2, 20.8. So it's sharpened pretty much average of most knives that I review. So the grind angles aren't crazy awkward or anything. They just pretty much are what knives are sharpened at from factories, at least budget knives these days. So yeah, I sharpened it to 18 degrees per side all the way along the length of it. Oh, popping, popping sharp. Uh, you think razor sharp is sharp? Nah, popping sharp. The rest of the lengths. Handle length, 95.6 millimeters, 3.76 inches. The grip area, it's just a bit more than eight centimeters, about three and a quarter inches. The thickness of the handle, it's right down the middle of the handle. Just on the G10, 10.96 millimeters, which is 0.431, so it's well under half an inch. The handle depth, uh, turn over this way so it sits better. That's this measurement. The widest point within the grip is right back here. And that is 19.1 millimeters, 0.752 of an inch. The widest point when it's closed, of course, is with the flipper. 24.6 millimeters, that's 0.969 of an inch. And the total length of this knife from tip to tail, 171 millimeters, which is... Let's do it this way. I didn't write down the inches. Almost six and three quarter, not quite six and three quarter inches. So yeah, it's a small knife. I like it. I really like it. I'm probably going to be keeping this knife, especially after I, you know, put the blue handle scales on it. It's probably going into my keeper list. I just love this thing. Uh, Wonderful knife. Feels good, comfortable, no hot spots except for the pocket clip is a little bit hot in the hand because it stands out so far. If anybody from Civivi is watching, you really can shrink that distance here so that, you know, it'll still work fine going over a pair of jeans. But when you're holding the knife, um, it doesn't feel hot in the right hand, but in the left hand, it's a bit awkward right here. It's not hot. It's just awkward. And it could be thinner, and then it would be even more comfortable in the right hand as well. So, yeah, it's a nice knife. Uh, summary over the things. Lightweight. Comfortable. It's a good slicer. It's a good cutter. It's a good piercer. It's got a perfect sharpness choil. Perfect detent. Great action. Lockup is exactly what I want. Loads of room to get out of there nice lanyard pin it's it's wonderful cons well maybe not a con there's no left pocket clip to some people that's definitely a con and things that are just okay but i prefer if they're a little bit different but it's not like it's really a con i'd like the jimping to go a little bit further i'd like uh to see different screws for the uh pocket clip i like that they're flush uh, maybe they just need to be higher end screws because I found, uh, not just with Civivi, with almost every company, T6 flush screws strip out too easily. So, yeah. And the pocket clip could be a bit thinner. Again, not a big deal, but, you know, would be nice. it would be nicer if it was even nicer. So there you go. What do you think? Do you have one of these Civivi bows? Check out Brad Zinker's other designs. You can check him out. I'll leave a link for his Instagram down below. And uh, Civivi knives are simply wonderful. Not always, but usually. So thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you to my fan financial supporters. You guys are awesome. I will have a knife sale coming up soon. I'm planning on doing it the 11th of uh, April. That's for my supporters. My supporters get two days of access to my sale before anybody else. 
that means the public will probably have access to what is left over on Wednesday, April the 13th. That's if everything goes to plan. I'm not certain that's how it's going to work, but uh, those are my targets right now. So thank you. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb, no matter how dirty it is. <laughs> Bye for now.